Hello, my friends. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about finding the perfect mentor for you right now. You can also use this to find an ideal coach or a psychotherapist or a trainer for that matter. First thing I would like to mention is just like dating, we cannot expect to find the ideal person for us on a first date. We need to give other people the chance to get to know us and to give ourselves the chance to meet the other people as they are. And in order for that to happen, we cannot speed up time. So time needs to pass in order for our brain and heart to sync on the information that we've concluded with our senses and our feelings about the trainer and our thoughts about the trainer. And then we can make a decision if they are the best person for us at this moment. But just because they are the perfect person for you at this moment doesn't mean they will be the perfect person for you forever. Let me give you a personal example. In 2017, after my tumor surgery, I had to get back in shape because before the tumor surgery, I fell in the gym and I broke my sacral bone and cracked two vertebra. This was a big problem because I had a lot of back pain, but due to the cut on my lower stomach where the tumor was taken out of, I could not do like trainings that included my stomach and my back, which were the most important for my recovery when it comes to my back pain. So the first thing I needed to find was a physiotherapist that will be able to help me progress slowly and start to get in shape. And this actually lasted for over a year. I was not able to go back to the gym for over a year because that's when I felt safe to go back. And that's when my body felt safe. And I was like, yeah, I can actually do something with weights. After that, I started lifting weights and I started reshaping my body composition. And I was very happy with that for a year. But then I decided I want to do more yoga. So every year when I change and grow, I get new desires and I set up new goals. And those goals require some other mentors that are just professional in that goal, which does not mean that my previous ones previous mentors, trainers, and physiotherapists and psychotherapists weren't good enough. No, they were perfect for the time and the place where I was at at the time. So make a sense like, what do you want to achieve at this time in life? And what are your expectations? And then you can decide what kind of a trainer or a mentor would be ideal for you. Would you rather have somebody who is like direct and concise like me or somebody who is more emotional and supportive, like a family role, like if it was your family member or your mother or your close friend, because it's a different kind of push and we all need different types of pushes in our life. Sometimes we also have a particular situation that is tied to maybe our cultural background or an issue we overcome in our life or we are overcoming it at the moment. And in those times, it's usually much more beneficial when you find a mentor or a coach or a trainer that has been through the same thing because you can relate to them better. Another thing which is very important to keep in mind when you're looking for your next trainer, mentor or coach is how much emphasis do you put on education And how much emphasis do you put on knowledge and practical experience of that person? How important it is to you where the person is in their life and where they are going and what are their values? And is it important to you that your person has experience in the particular type of business you're in in order for you to have a better understanding with them or not? A great way that you can actually check out whether the person is good fit for you is to see if they have some testimonials on their website and then read through that and see if those people were in a similar situation to yours. Another thing that can be amazing is that if the person is offering 20 minute free info session, you should definitely use that. And then you will see and feel and think on that info session whether it was the right fit or not. I really urge you to follow your gut feeling. Even if the person is the best trainer in the planet and your gut feeling is saying like, I don't feel this person, I don't like him or I don't like her, maybe you should reconsider. Because actually the most important measurement of success is how do you feel after the coaching session or how do you feel after that training? I'm not saying you should always be feeling happy, joyful and comfortable because I certainly did not. After some psychotherapy sessions, I felt home. I was crying and I I felt sad, but I was processing my emotion. I was not eating it or hiding it and pretending it's not there. So that was useful. The most important thing you can feel is inner growth. It's like if 
your heart and your mind are somehow more peaceful and growing through something that even if it's hard, you feel that you're on the right path. Your intuition will never betray you. We sometimes confuse intuition with fear. But fear is more constrictive and intuition is more expansive. It feels more like love. Even though sometimes, yeah, it does hurt and it's painful, the process. But also keep in mind, do you feel more ready to face your challenges after the conversation with your coach or mentor or trainer? Or do you shut down? Do you have absolute 100% belief in that person and you trust them and you can rely on them? And you feel comfortable sharing some things from your life that you feel shame around. Because that was very important to me. I felt shame in the gym. I felt shame around my thoughts. So when I was looking for my psychotherapist, physiotherapist, yoga teacher, bodybuilding teacher, I always looked for people with whom I don't feel excess shame. So I already felt shame that I could not do something. I don't understand something. I feel I'm very bad at something. And I knew that was normal. We all feel shame. But what was not normal is hiding it from your trainer or coach or therapist because they should be there to serve you and support you to be the best you can be. And you should be able to confide in them and to know that your secret is safe with them. Even if it's not a secret, even if it's something that I had, which is I was literally unable to do a proper push-up and I was literally unable to do any exercises for my abs because after my surgery, I completely disconnected from my, my body part. It was like I could do 100 exercises and feel nothing and not get actually my abs involved in the exercise. It sounds crazy, but if you're in psychotherapy and physiotherapy, you can understand what I'm talking about when brain loses connection to a certain body part and you need to actually build mind and muscle again to connect them after a traumatic event. And another thing to keep in mind is that you should always have the freedom to say to your coach or trainer or therapist or mentor that this is not no longer serving you. And you should be able to tell them that and talk about that and decide that if it's time to leave and if you want something different, you should be able to do that. You should never be afraid of them. You should never feel that you are betraying them or their trust if you decide to leave. Because you have 100% responsibility for your life and anything that is no longer serving you has to go. And that's the same with type of trainings. If you feel like sick of some kind of training, you can talk to that person that is your trainer that you don't enjoy it anymore and you would like to do something differently. And pay attention how they treat you. Do they shame you or do they just bully you into doing it? Or do they say that it's okay that you feel that way and give you an explanation why it's an important exercise or do they just change the exercise? There are no wrong and right answers. You need to decide what kind of relationship you want to have with your mentor And you need to follow your feelings and intuitions because it will never guide you astray. Also, to conclude this episode, I highly recommend ask your friends and your acquaintances who they are satisfied with. Because if you have friends you trust and love and you are similar, obviously, in values, your friends, then it will be much easier to go somewhere where they've been already and to test it out for yourself. Ask around, ask friends, acquaintances, colleagues that know you because they might be able to recommend someone that is ideal for you. Don't forget to use the opportunity of free info session if they offer it and check out their testimonials to see whether the people who are working with them were in a similar situation like you. This is also important when you're finding a business mentor or a tutor, because if you cannot relate to a person, if you don't find yourself feeling like you can tell them anything, you can ask anything, maybe that's not your person. Don't blame yourself. Just give yourself time and space to decide on what kind of a relationship would you like to have with your mentor or a coach or a trainer or a therapist and make sure to find that person because that person exists and you should never settle when it comes to the matters that are so important in your life. Thank you for listening and I'll talk to you next week.